Uh, so Ross, have you been trying it out? I have, yes, yeah. So my my big learning this week is um, that's good because weirdly, I've, my my children have been my test bed again this week. They 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 enjoy that more than the one word. However, what I've noticed, and it might be because I've been practicing with children, is they have one story in their head, and it doesn't really matter what I give them. We we come back to Star Wars. <laughs> so there's been a lot of that's good because of Star Wars. But yeah, it was uh, I've enjoyed it. Right. So that's mm-hmm. kind of the the learning there is you sh- you we want to be saying that's good because I'm going to work with your story, and they're going that's good because I'm going to work with yours, rather than that's good because I've already got a plan in my exactly. head. Yes, yes. So, so there you go. But, but I think that the learning there might be, I need to find a broader audience for this week's experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, uh, also, we all say children are so creative and open-minded, then they're not. How old are they? Uh, 13, 11 and uh, 8. All oh, right, because um, it's funny, improvised. I, there was one very good one who said, you know, I thought my children, you know, yes and. We always say adults are yes but and children are yes and and turn out to be the very opposite. Yes. Uh, maybe just at the stage of development where they're at, they kind of don't want to be wrong or they've got such a good idea in their head, which is fine as well. Yeah. But this next one is going to be quite interesting because they really do have to work with, with you uh, or you have to work with them. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see how much they kind of go back to the guide rails that they want, if it's Star Wars or, or yeah. not. But yes, you may have to widen your sample. Yeah. I think that's my big outtake is this week I'm going for a more grown up audience. I think that's uh, where, <laughs> where are you going to find grown ups? Well, I'm out with some friends this evening, but I'm not sure that's good because in the pub is a good idea. But I'll let you know. Well, yeah. you're gonna... uh, they're certainly not grown ups. Let's face well, it. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, because yeah, well, you're moving on to the next exercise now. Well, actually. that is true. There we go. Well, I, I, they can be my they can be my audience for this week's experiment. Yeah. yeah. So this week's is, we call it Swedish story. I don't know why. I don't know why, because there's no Swedish involved. But what happens is you start a sentence and then you sort of trail off and your partner or partners have to fill in the blank, as it were. So I was I was walking down the road and suddenly saw That's Darth it. Vader. And the amazing thing, Darth Vader was yes, actually eating a, a hamburger. And so you have to, you have to work. So you're telling the story, but they have input. And of course, what's interesting, you can do it with one person or more. And so I'll do it with the two of you and then you'll have a go as well. So you've got to try and create narrative because you might have a bit of a plan, but then they throw in something quite different. And it's interesting. I have done this with people in sales, for example, pharmaceutical reps. And um, it's kind of interesting because uh, it was a man who was doing it with a woman. And he said, I was in this bar and I saw the bartender and... uh, then I ordered a, a drink and it was, and then the thing was, you could see that the woman was really wanted to know more about the bartender. Whereas the man was thinking, which drink shall I order? His, that was his agenda. We in the audience could see, talk more about the bartender, get the bartender involved in the story, right? Cause he was just thinking, oh, she, I've got to find the right thing that matches her opinion of, of which cocktail. Anyway, yeah. so I don't know why we call it Swedish story. What I do know is that uh, this is another way of, creating an offer and accepting an offer which is the rule of improv listen for the offer oh right they've said we're in a bar they've said we're in this cocktail bar oh we know we're driving or we're flying um and that's the the listen accept the offer and swedish for offer is erbjudanda i try to learn the word offer in as many languages as i can (laughs) um and not every language has a direct translation. Some have something like a promotion, like we would say a special offer. Uh, others have a sort of idea of a, a gift. So uh, it's not always a, a, a direct translation because we talk about an offer as a gift at opening. Yeah. Some people think it's a special offer this week, 20% off. However, should we have a go anyway? Yeah. Uh, mm. So uh, so why so why not, Chris, don't you tell me where, where are we starting? Just give me an opening line for a so, story. So fly fishing uh, on the river test. Okay, I was fly fishing on the River Test and I had this amazing, uh, extraordinary kind of bait and it was actually a... Which way go? Oh. No, you go? No, both of you, just shout out. Oh, uh, okay, so that's the Swedish thing. We can all jump in. Exactly. <laughs> so it, we'll see if it gets too messy. I'll just yeah. tell one of yeah. you to okay. shut up. And also, it may be that Chris knows too much about fishing. I don't know. Matt, name. We'll find out, yeah. 
Well, I tell you what, why don't we, let's start again. Chris okay. has told us the beginning and we'll make Ross be my partner. Let's have a go at that. Okay. So I was I was fishing uh, 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 by the river test and I thought I've got this new bait, which was actually a... Um, a, a, a Big Mac meal um, sealed in cling film. Okay, that's quite a big offer. A Big Mac meal sealed in cling film. And I, my friend uh, John had told me this was amazing. So I, I had a go and suddenly you wouldn't believe, but a fish came up and... Um, offered me a copy of The Times. A copy of The Times. And I looked and there it was. Page 73, fishing news. A Big Mac in cling film is what they want. And the fish said, my goodness, this is delicious. Uh, you'll see me quoted, I'm the Times fish correspondent. And uh, I said, I can't catch you. Why don't you come with me to my... Um, hut in the middle of the woods where I have every copy of the Times. <laughs> my hut in the middle of the woods, I have every copy of the Times. So there we were. We had dinner. We didn't have fish. We had chips, though. And he liked on his chips, especially some... Um, petrol. <laughs> Some petrol. And this was a bit dangerous, especially if you've got every copy of the Times in the middle of the wood. But the thing was, I knew we wouldn't catch fire because I was wearing... Uh, um, I was wearing see-through underpants, but they were my comfiest pair and I've been wearing them all autumn. Ross, you're, you're giving me quite a lot of offers here. So <laughs> try, try and keep it to not so, one word, but one sort of beat, if you like. Yeah. And my, my see-through underpants. And the, I suddenly realised the fish wasn't wearing any underwear. So I said, you better put this on. It's a... It's a, a coat made out of a chinchilla. A coat made out of chinchilla. And he said, my goodness, I think I recognise one of these chinchillas. That's Charlie the chinchilla. I last saw him at the... Uh, at the football match uh, where we were both cheering for the same team. We were both cheering for the same team. We were both cheering for Southampton, which is near the Test River. And so we thought, I, he said, I can't wear the coat of my friend. And I said, you know what? We can bring Charlie back to life because I have a special... A special potion in the pocket of my coat. In the pocket of my coat, which is just uh, over my underpants. And I brought out the potion. Actually, I looked again at the Times and there it was on page 23 of the Times. The special potion to bring back Charlie the Chinchilla. And uh, the potion was made from... The hair of dogs. The hair of dogs. And these were cockapoo dogs. And so I put it into the coat and suddenly Charlie re-emerged. And he said, I'm hungry. And I said, look, I've got a Big Mac in cling film. Why don't you have that? He said, I've gone vegetarian since I had a temporary death. I own, Now I only eat... Uh, uh, quiche. Quiche. Uh, yes. Quiche. And so I said, oh, well, I tell you what, I'll go to my friend's house and he makes quiche. And he's an amazing fisherman. We had fish quiche. It was delicious. And the fish was joining him. He said, I'll just go veggie. And the thing was, we decided next year we'll go on holiday to Barbados. Barbados. Whoa, I'm going to Barbados, sunny Caribbean Sea. OK, thank you, Ross. Hurrah. Now, Chris, what were you hoping might happen there? Went a bit crazy. It went a bit crazy. Uh, um, uh, I was hoping for more crazy, to be honest. <laughs> I, I was quite enjoying it. So, okay. um, so I, I think there's a bit of learning going on. So, so basically, uh, it felt like Ross was telling the story with you, but it sounded like you were saying, "No, just give me an offer." Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I think I, was getting I don't want to say no, but yeah. uh, you kind of don't have to write it uh, if, if you were. So it's quite good if you give one word or one yeah. beat, if you like, one offer. Yeah. I, so, I, I was a bit like Ross. I was thinking I was joining in with a story. Yeah, no, yeah. You'd, well, that's, we, it's, it's, this is why I didn't just send the instructions because I all these unknown unknowns. Yeah. Because uh, it's kind of basically I was wearing a coat and the coat yeah. was made of chinchilla. And the yeah. thing was, when I put the coat on, I could become invisible. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So you so just we, need that one word prompt rather one than... Word, than one word, you know, you don't have to do more uh, two phrases. It's really uh, so I'll tell you what, Chris, why don't you do it? I'll be your partner. Okay. So, Ross, tell us, uh, why do you begin with, I was da 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 something like that is the opening line. I was walking to the barbers one morning and then... So I was walking to the barbers one morning and then I bumped into a koala bear smoking a cigar. You have to give me a beat. To... Oh, a beat. So, so um, and then... Uh, and then the koala said, oh, no, you've caught me smoking cigars. I was supposed to give up. 
Because he was really quite a young koala bear, and young koala bears shouldn't have any tobacco whatsoever. They should be more into yoga. Because yoga really fits the, the physicality of a koala bear. They're hanging off trees in very strange angles, and a little bit of yoga means it takes all of the pressure off their bottoms. <laughs> because the bottom of a koala bear doesn't like pressure at all. In fact, what it likes to do is be massaged gently in the sunshine while it's eating a eucalyptus leaf. And sometimes when it, when it thinks about, oh, look what I've got here. <laughs> when, when I think about wild animals, uh, koala bears often pop into my mind, along with my good friends. Uh, wombats. Because the wombat uh, family are very interesting beasts. They, um, they like to do Sudoku at weekends whilst they drink a little... Snivervitz. Because Snivervitz is the favourite drink of wombats when koalas, if they get on it, they get a little bit tipsy. And I've seen them get a bit fisty with it too. So never give a koala one of those. What koalas much prefer are... Pasta's lager. Because it's obviously Antipodean. And um, Antipodeans can only drink uh, Pasta's lager because um, otherwise they would have a terrible allergic reaction and they come out uh, speaking Swedish. <laughs> a little like uh, this story, I believe. So um, the Scandinavians um, uh, at this time of year uh, inspire the whole world to wear these amazing uh, jumpers. And I think we wear jumpers because we're scared of death. <laughs> and when we're wearing very brightly patterned uh, jumpers, we feel a lot more alive and therefore a little bit closer to the God we worship. And uh, the other thing that makes me feel a little bit more holy is... Uh, eating pasta. Because there is nothing that says Jesus more than spaghetti. Uh, well, there is one more thing, and that's... A massaging the bottom of a koala. <laughs> we come full circle. <laughs> yes. Basically, you want to try and kind of think about how do I get to closure? And yeah. the one is kind of whatever my starting position was, can I get there? Uh, so, well, I'll have another go, and you can both chime in now. Um, okay. And this is, I was, uh, I'll just start with, I was walking down Oxford Street. Uh, it was a beautiful sunny day, but then I saw a limo, and inside was... Syringe. A syringe. And a syringe, because uh, there was a doctor there offering vaccines to stop us becoming... Aliens. Aliens, because... That whole year, more and more people have become aliens. They'd left the planet and gone to the planet. Suppository. Suppository. <laughs> and the, I didn't want to go to suppository. And so the doctor gave me the syringe. And in the syringe was this potion made from... Ketchup. Ketchup. I love ketchup. And suddenly I felt strong. Some aliens were coming towards me. I pushed them away with my... Purple worms. My purple worms, they are fearful of purple worms. I got these purple worms from... Boots. Boots. Boots the chemist. <laughs> and I got loyalty points with my purple worms. <laughs> uh, you can't get purple worms from Timothy White's because Timothy White's doesn't exist anymore. And so I started saying, can I breed the purple worms? I took them to my farm in... Devon. Devon. And that's there, the purple worms. They, more and more, there were worms every day, more and more. I was feeding them... Uh, um, asbestos. <laughs> and that was the great thing. Uh, when, whenever there was asbestos in a building, you send the purple worms in. So they are the enemies of asbestos and the evil aliens. And soon I had a whole truckload of purple worms. We drove up to London on the... Oh, on a on a motorbike which was pulling a bus and this was the amazing thing we headed through the m4 and the aliens were there the purple worms were here and i said now we must pay the congestion damn i forgot and i was fined 20 pounds and the aliens had paid the congestion charge because they had a ticket ticket they had a ticket and so i found them in oxford street it was time my purple worms, there they were. And you never guess who had betrayed us and gone to work with the aliens. It was... God. God! I'm facing God and aliens, and I have purple worms. And I think, my goodness, what am I going to do? I decided that I had to sacrifice myself. So I immediately, I... Leapt from a bridge. 
I leapt from a bridge into the River Thames and the purple worms were all hiding in the Thames and they saved me. The God thought I was dead. The aliens thought I was dead. And suddenly I emerged now dressed as a witch, a witch and banished them. The, the aliens went away. They left our planet. God realized the error of his ways. He asked me for forgiveness and I gave him a, a penalty he had to pay, which was. Uh, the, the congestion charge. He had to pay the congestion charge for the rest of eternity. And so now, whenever I walk down Oxford Street, I think I have saved humanity, all thanks to that syringe. There we go. There so we go. it'll be interesting to see what happens when you play with your children mm. uh, with their Star Wars thing. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a bit trickier, obviously, yeah. because, uh, uh, you know, your fellow player can throw in weird curveballs yeah. Or they may have kind of, oh, I want to get back on track to where I'm hoping it'll be. So, Ross, why don't you have a go? Uh, so you're going to tell the story. Yeah. And um, why do you say, and so I landed in New York. OK. And so I landed in New York. Oh, do you want me to sort of build from there and then? You build, you build from there okay. and you leave a dot, dot, dot for us. So I landed in New York and decided it was time for a shopping trip. Um, and so off I set to Macy's, credit card in hand, looking for... Some tacos. Some tacos. And I found a beautiful little pop-up Mexican restaurant right in the middle of Macy's. I wandered over and I suddenly realised I'd forgotten... My trousers. My trousers. But it wasn't a problem because it turned out it was a naked Mexican restaurant. And actually I was embraced by my friends in the Mexican restaurant and we all decided... To dance. Oh, sorry. To dance. And as we danced, we realised it was impossible to eat a taco and dance at the same time. So we thought the safest place to put our tacos was in our heads, in our heads. And so we gently inserted the tacos into our heads and carried on dancing until Rick Astley arrived. Rick Astley arrived, fuming that we danced to every other song in the world except for his. And so he demanded a ransom of um, our firstborn. A ransom of our firstborn, which felt like quite a heavy price to pay. So we sat down, ate some tacos and decided... That we were never going to give you up. <laughs> we were <laughs> never going to give you up. At which point Rick Astley realised the error of his ways and offered us... Our firstborn and in a, a trip to Brooklyn. Our firstborn and a trip to Brooklyn. So off we set on the train to Brooklyn. A whole gang of us, tacos, Rick Astley. We'd got Mexican beers, um, but we fell asleep and we missed the stop for Brooklyn and we woke up in <laughs> Azerbaijan um, where we realised there was only one way to get back to New York, which was... Rick Astley's private jet. Rick Astley's private jet, which fortunately he keeps in Azerbaijan. So we loaded it full of fuel, hopped on the plane, took off. And just as we took off, the pilot said to us, let's play Cluedo. Let's play Cluedo. Um, which I actually hate Cluedo. So I found the nearest parachute and jumped out of the plane and landed. In Devon. In Devon, where I have a friend who lives. So I knocked on his door and, hello, Chris, I've just parachuted in from Azerbaijan. Any chance I can stay for the night? And Chris said, where are your trousers? <laughs> and Why have I... you got tacos in your head? <laughs> <laughs> and so we sat down and I explained to Chris the story of how I lost my trousers in a Mexican restaurant in New York. Hooray, well done. There you go. So it's probably easier in person to, to sort of decide you know i'll give it especially if there's children they'll be yeah. wanting to jump in you might say it's your turn now your turn now yes yeah so what's fun about this is again you have input that you didn't expect yeah. uh, you can enjoy it the other person can be weird or they can be more linear if you like and it's that sense you you have to justify their offer you never say that's a terrible offer you idiot you go of course that's exactly why the wombats of course azerbaijan why wouldn't it be that's the kind of celebrating the other person's offer yeah. with that energy, which, which you both clearly have. And I feel upping your Elvis lives on that energy. Uh, but there are other people going, oh, no, what can I do now? So it's, you know, normal people might find this hard because they think, 
oh, how can I justify Azerbaijan? Whereas we're going, of course, I've got no trousers on. Azerbaijan <laughs> welcomes anybody with no trousers. <laughs> and that's kind of the improv journey, yeah. I suppose, which is it's OK to be wrong. It's OK to be flummoxed and enjoy the flummoxery, whatever that word might be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think I, you have quite a long time to do this one. I think our next, uh, we're booked in for November 29th, something like that. Right, great. So, okay. Uh, feel free to go back to any of the other ones if you want. Yeah. If you feel uh, you could do yes and instead of that's good because, if that feels uh, going to be more pertinent for the audience. Uh, but this this is fun. The main thing is to try and I suppose, and the children might find this harder, to think about how can I kind of circle back to where we started or what's the ending you know and so for example that's why generally the dragon was vanquished that's why the bad will never return or we found the treasure those are most hmm. stories we we got rid of the bad the dragon was left our village or we found the treasure on top of the mountain and now we lived happily ever after though those are kind of easy ones or there might even be a rudyard kipling which is why uh, purple worms are never seen now because there are no aliens. We don't need them anymore. So, sort of that why the why the leopard got its spots, sort of thing. You could that could be the moral at the end as to why the world is as it is. Okay, right. Super. Well, yes. thank you, Neil. Yes, thank you. Enjoying it, and uh, then we uh, we've got one more I think to do, which is going to be creating little scenes, which is quite fun. So oh, cool. Have, let me know how it goes. Enjoy. Well, thank it. You. Have a wonderful weekend. Fun as ever. Love thank you. you. Take care. Thanks, Neil.